besides being a very hard power, it has a very strong, professionally uh, competent and a motivated IDF. There have been problems. This has been a big failure. There is a kind of a failure of imagination, I would say, uh, besides intelligence and various other things. We'll talk about it as we go on. But the fact is that till this time of the, uh, say, we call it the Israeli 9-11, there was an aura of invincibility for the IDA. And they would say that Mossad, even if you think something, Mossad will find out. So that was the kind of aura or, or the kind of past experiences which uh, the world had of IDF. That has uh, not only received a big dent, but shattered, I would say. So that getting back into that aura of invincibility will take a long time for the IDF. They underestimated. I was seeing one interview where they said we were seeing them train and all of that, but we never imagined they would do anything audacious. We thought they would. Yeah, there is a saying where they said that we saw them train and we thought they are training for a war they will never even contemplate launching, uh, not realizing that uh, the, this kind of a thing will happen. But if you actually see the chatter, if you actually see the kind of picture being built, the main focus uh, of this operation, which they called uh, very uh, mischievously or deviously the Tufani Alaska, uh, kind of a thing. So it was known as Tufani Alaska that they are going to take the revenge all of, of the Alaska Mosque. And now Al Alaska Mosque, you know, is in Jerusalem, East Jerusalem. So all they got some weapons caught from Jordan, which were headed towards West Bank, towards East Jerusalem. All the chatter which was happening was uh, being shown as something big is going to happen in Jerusalem or in the West Bank. So, the attention of the IDF with certain tacit support of the Hezbollah had moved northwards. Second issue which was a major setback uh, for the Israelis was that Netanyahu uh, not only indirectly supported the Hamas because for him the bigger enemy was the PLO, erstwhile PLO or the Fateh and then now the Palestinian Authority. So, he wanted to bring down the authority of the Palestinian Authority or the West Bank or the Yasser Arafat and now the Mahmoud Abbas. And in, indirectly, he was supporting Hamas, which had gained power in the Gaza Strip in 2006. So over a period of time, uh, they projected as if the things are going to take place in West Bank, because that is where the settlers had happened. That is where about six to seven lakhs of uh, Israeli settlers had forcibly gone and occupied uh, the West Bank uh, thing. Then the Hezbollah was showing a certain kind of activity in Lebanon, in Syria, Golan Heights, that side. So, and Netanyahu had built almost a billion dollar uh, kind of a fence and a wall in southern part, which was along the, I would say, 37 kilometers, some say 41 kilometers of the borders, which was with Gaza Strip. So, this kind of a smart fence had certain amount of technology which was there in the above the fence, on the fence and underground sensors. Now they thought that this fence is invincible. However, it got breached at six major places. Attempts were made, I, I am told, 18 to 20 just, places. Just, I believe, earth movers. Earth movers, but for that they had to shatter certain things. The surveillance cameras had to be shattered. The picture had to be painted, uh, a kind of a radio silence had to happen and a terrorist organization like Hamas can't do it alone. So there had to be an external state support. There is clear state support. There is a clear state support. That's probably Iran However, or? Uh, it, it is Iran. It is Iran and, and uh, uh, of course certain amount of people from Jordan, from Lebanon, from Syria, all that they would have supported. But the fact is that the money, the training and certain amount of equipment has come from Iran. So, 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 IDF myth has been shattered. It will take a long time for them to come out. However, the resolve, what has, the good thing which has happened for Israel is, amongst all that bad things which have happened, this is the worst kind of a nightmare for them since the uh, Six-Day War, 1967. The casualties are the worst, 1,400 dead, out of which about 300 are soldiers. So it is not that the soldiers were nowhere there. They were there, but they were not prepared for this kind of a thing which will happen from the air, from the rocket attacks, which uh, swamped the Iron Dome uh, 
uh, you see iron dome is is a very very good uh, kind of anti aircraft or anti missile system but the fact is it has its uh, limitations by way of numbers i think in a minute it can handle 300 rockets and the entire thing got swamped by 4500 rockets or 7000 in total so you see that so it happened from the air it happened from the sea it happened on the fence it happened in the kind of a int picture which was built out and of course it was that one week of uh, holiday season religious holidays which were happening so it was timed in that manner so these were all these things which led to uh, this kind of a loss which israel faced if you look at gaza it is so densely populated in a strip which is 41 to 42 kilometers long of north south and 8 to 10 at its widest from the mediterranean sea to east west the population is almost 2.4 million it is all uh, urban kind of a uh, built up area which is there there is hardly any trees there are hardly any open spaces and and uh, there is hardly any agriculture or so so they were essentially living out of dole which is happening the problem is that 19000 what was about 20 years back 2 uh, to 3000 of gaza, gaza uh, people coming to work in israel had become in 21 years of netanyahu uh, 19000 now these were the ones who were the informers many of them actually didn't go back so israelis were looking at what they are carrying inside is there a knife or is there a screw driver is there a screw which you can come and use it here while it was the man who was the main person who he is the one who was infiltrating he was the one who was the informing he was giving intelligence back home where is what what is the routine of the idf where there are loopholes how to go across all that kind of information and many of them also you see there are almost out of the 9 million odd population of israel 2 million are arab israelis so they are the ones if you have to make a country implode it has to be from within and you can carry out a similarity with what is happening in india if you want it to implode the enemy is within it could have a political phase it could have a economic phase it could have a religious phase it could have a caste uh, kind of a fault line but the fact is that enemy or that fault line within the country are what are being targeted